Panorama as a starter project, and then also led the effort to introduce 3D navigation. Uh, Daniel, at the same time, is also helping build out the Street View engineering team, and today will be talking to us about Street View's past, present, and future. So let's welcome Daniel. All right, well, thank you. Anyway, it's really a, a pleasure to be here. The, um, you know, Street View is one of Google's most beloved brands. I think the third most favorite brand within, within of all Google's products. So, you know, it's always fun to talk about Google uh, and, and Street View in particular. And uh, it's also a very fun product. It's got a lot of interesting technical aspects. And, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the past, present, and future and how the whole project really scaled from just an experiment to something that we, I don't think any of us could have imagined to the point where it is today. And uh, so I'll talk a little bit about the past and, um, and uh, where we're at and uh, where we're at and then uh, kind of how it in, might involve you guys in the future. Because I know you're all you know, uh, very important to what we want to do in terms of keeping our data fresh and, and uh, that's actually one of the most important aspects of the CDU future. So I'd like to go a little bit into the past. Um, very few things get started early on in Google or in the early days without Larry Page being involved. And uh, it turned out one day he took his car, was driving down Highway 1. Maybe some of you will have a chance while you're visiting California, and uh, which is the road that along the coast that connects basically San Francisco to Los Angeles. And, uh, and so he took out his video camera and said, wow, you know, we're organizing the world's information. Why don't we organize you know, this, uh, this beautiful coastline here. So he took that video and gave it to a, a professor at Stanford and said, well, do something with it. And that was kind of the, really the start of Street View. Well, well before we actually called it Street View. Um, but it turns out that uh, Street View actually, the concept itself is something that started a long time ago. In the, in the late 70s, actually, there was a professor at MIT who, um, went and did something very similar. He captured a, a bunch of low-res video footage of Aspen, Colorado, and then made this really uh, simple, crude, but pretty interesting interface so that people could experience Aspen without um, actually going there, kind of like Street View today. We actually didn't know much about this project, but as we got into it, started digging into the history and found all these cool things. There's, thing, there, there's stuff actually that was done even in the early 1900s, believe it or not, with black and white photos and people making presentations and be able to do kind of semi-virtual tours. <coughs> so the, the original, the original uh, way Street View started actually was with, like I said, a, a, a simple video camera off the side of a car or a van and collecting this um, kind of uh, street strip panoramas. And the idea was we, we would just have these infinite panoramas that would just kind of circle around the city. Um, there's a lot of issues with doing that though, because if you want to actually lay out a, a whole strip of of video all at once rather than frame by frame, you get this weird effect of things in the foreground being close together, foreshortened, and the things in the background stretched out. And uh, that actually ended up being kind of a pretty big problem for us, technically. And we had some ways to work around it, but, um, you know, for instance, things like this, when the car comes to a stop, uh, you know, you get this <coughs> weird footage and you get a lot of waviness. Um, so this was actually the original, the, the first Street View vehicle, again, well before we had to call the, the product Street View, where we had the, if you look in the uh, upper right corner here, there's a camera and those, uh, those little things that say sick on it are actually 3D lasers that allow us to capture the geometry of the scene. Um, <laughs> and so we made, kind of originally started a little bit of a clandest clandestine um, experiment. And uh, you can see we had a little custom enclosure there with the cameras hanging out. Getting power in the car was actually a big problem too because all the, the to actually store the data on the disks is not uh, required quite as much power. So a lot of early engineering, and this was really the first result. This kind of infinite strip panorama, you know, which was interesting but difficult to make it into a into an end product. <coughs> we were thinking something like this, where you would look on Google Maps and then along the side of the road we would show you green lines and show you these strips. Um, and actually, th then I started around this time in, uh, in early 2007, and actually, um, my, my first project was to make 360-degree panoramas. So I, I was working on these strip panoramas, and I told my boss after a couple weeks, oh, these things are, they're not very tractable. What if, uh, could I try something with 360 panoramas? I think it'd be a lot easier to work with. And he said, 
at that time, he said, oh yeah, I should have that. So um, I ended up helping design a camera. You'll see that turn up on the top. This is added to the original van. Um, and that was one of our first mechanical engineers, kind of putting a whole computer rack system in the back. Um, and lo and behold, we actually uh, got the, within a year and a half, got the program going and captured data, you know, in <coughs> places around the country and launched, uh, put this little button up on the map, um, Street View, and just, we just put it out there and just see what would happen. Do we, is this gonna be a big success or a dud or what? You know, that's how we kind of do things around here. And um, it turned out to be a huge success, actually. People just loved it. They, it, the, our traffic kind of went through the roof and it was, it was a very exciting time for the whole team. Um, of course, wasn't without our problems. Like uh, you can see that person there, <laughs> double, double exposed. You know, we've got all kinds of weird artifacts, and there was actually a whole cottage industry just dedicated to the weird artifacts. Of street, you, know. Um, you know, but uh, that's okay. It was kind of interesting too because people didn't actually seem to mind the artifacts. They almost kind of loved talking about them. It even made the product our our bugs. Actually, now that I think about it, was kind of almost worked to our favor. People kind of seem to love the bugs in our product, you know, and, and point them out and make websites. So anyway, you know, we would get weird things like this, you know, <laughs> all the timings are right on the cameras, you know, we get these kind of very compact cars. <laughs> and uh, so then we said, well, okay, this is cool. This is a great way to get it going, but let's, um, let's actually, you know, start making a real professional, more professional scalable system. So then our next camera, we actually, we actually um, bought a uh, commercial camera. It's, it was low res, but it kind of did the job. And then we said, um, but, but Street View is about high res and zooming in, and as you guys know, seeing what's about a business and a storefront. And so we again went back to the drawing board and said, well, let's design our own car, I mean our own camera, and something that we can put on a, not, a, not these big bulky bands, you know, polluting bands, but let's put it on a Prius, of course. So that was, um, that was a good uh, PR coup. And then we started building out the fleet. And, and you know, people talk about, oh, the engineering's so amazing, but for me, Actually, building out this fleet was by far the most complex product process of the, I think the whole product. You know, just building hundreds and hundreds of cars and setting them around you know the planet. Um, so we took them all over. You know, Germany. Um, then we made yet another camera. We kept on getting better at making cameras and wanted better and higher resolution. So from between the, the first launch in 2007 until 2009, you can see the expansion was incredible. We pretty much got every street and nook and, you know, public nook and cranny in all the United States. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so then we said, well, let's go international with this. You know, the, obviously it's been a huge success in the US. And so we started collecting, started collecting around in Europe. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> again, were very excited about this. And here we had some people that we would actually say we were gonna drive in certain places and we had some <laughs> friends waiting for us. <laughs> and then they, <laughs> so um, okay, then so again, the biggest challenge was to how do we keep this going? You know, how do we keep feeding the beast here and and start going all around the world? So um, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of issues. You know, just how you process the data and the storage and the surveying and all that. So um, okay, and 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 to even make it more, we wanted to go to places just beyond where we could go with our cars. So we. You know, we put the cameras on boats, on trains, on, we made our own special bicycle. We even had a way to import data that was collected underwater, 360 panoramas. And so we had this underwater view, you know, um, which is, you know, has a lot of also social aspects of like preserving the Great Barrier Reef in this case. Come in on a cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, went down the Grand Canyon, you know, took a raft down there, put a camera on the back of, on, on the back of a raft. Um, and then we allowed actually users to start collecting things with um, contributing uh, photo spheres. Put on a camera. We went actually, I think this was in, um, in Iraq, in Baghdad, you know, which is pretty interesting and cool. And then we, we decided to even expand the program further and let our users, or let uh, you know, professional photographers and semi professional photographers go inside businesses. And so we came up with this whole tripod system and a product at that time, which was called Interspace, and um, which we tied now to, uh, to our, our um, Google My Business program. And we started capturing now, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of businesses, restaurants and gas stations and you name it, hotels. And even went down to the South Pole, which is incredible. So, 
So now, after all this effort, you know, 10 years later, we're at, uh, or nine years later, we're at 75 plus countries, which is, and in, in growing. So we're, we're supporting, you know, a billion monthly people um, on Google Street View, and the, the, the number of people that come to our product is just incredible. And uh, so I'm gonna, just in the last few minutes, talk about our future and how it would involve the local guys, potentially. So, you know, Street View actually by this point has come to be something more than just uh, panoramas taken from, you know, streets around the world. I mean, we have, we've done special collects where we have somebody climbing El Capitan in Yosemite. We've taken, you know, hotels. We even have uh, Street View collected inside airplanes, you know, so people can go and see, hey, what would that seat look like if I, you know, is that enough, is that more legroom? Is that worth an extra price? So we, I mean, we're, we're trying to, you know, capture all the public places in a scalable and um, and a scalable way. So, so now, now actually, we're, we've come to a, I think a new fork in the in the technological crossroads where you know these cameras that I talked about that we spent years developing. Well, you know, slowly but surely, there's been a whole bunch of companies trying to create similar, not quite as good, but but much cheaper and practical cameras. So. So at this point, there even today, there's a range of cameras from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars that actually can capture image quality that's almost as good as the cameras we made several years ago. Um, so <laughs> we, we developed an app, the Street View app, and which can talk to these cameras, and you open it up, you can start capturing 360 panoramas, and you can we have a whole publishing pipeline where, where you can connect them manually, or you can um, auto, we can automatically connect them. And uh, wow, I have one minute. That's amazing. Okay, and we're uh, <laughs> perfect. My last slide too. Um, and so what we're what we're trying to do is is take take Street View into kind of the next realm of virtual reality and augmented reality. And um, you know we have our Street View app can now talk to has a VR mode, so you can experience this in, in 360 with from your your cell phone. And um, uh, so we. You know, the, what we've noticed is that the more data we capture, the better the experience is, and the better experience is, more people want to contribute to our, our cause, and, and it's, a, it's a great, uh, positive cycle. So, at that, at, at noon, thank you very much. So, um, I have five minutes for questions. Yes. <laughs> 